you know, uh, the subject matter was um, such that I think we would have gone crazy if we had just, you know, tried to maintain that sensibility 24 hours a day. Yeah, no, that would be a very rough method acting shoot if everyone was in character all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm joined by Ethan Supli, one of the stars of God is a Bullet, which is coming to theaters on June 23rd, 2023. I'm going to talk to him right now. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. I'll smile a lot. Thank you. All right. So thanks so much for joining me. Today I've got Ethan Supli, one of the stars of God is a Bullet, which is coming to theaters on June 23rd, 2023. It is a gritty action film, kind of like uh, Man on Fire, except instead of cartel members, you've got Satanists that uh, are being hunted down. It is a long, violent journey. Ethan plays an important role in this one, uh, one of the, the bad guys, but still a very interesting bad guy as well. So I'm very excited to talk to you and thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. So, you know, the first question, like, how did you get involved in this? This doesn't really scream like a movie that I would think you would jump at. But I mean, I guess maybe you enjoy playing this character. Maybe you love tattoos. I don't know. How did you get involved in this film? Uh, Nick is, Nick Cassavetti the director, is one of my oldest, dearest friends. And he actually mentioned it to me many years ago. And, and then it took a while to get it made. And he came back and he was like, we're finally making God is a Bullet. And I was excited, you know, um... I feel like uh, I I play uh, lovable and unintelligent quite quite a bit, or I have played that quite a bit. So um, it's always exciting to play a character that I haven't played much of. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I uh, you play a lot of very great characters, characters that like I love growing up. Like I adore a lot of films that you're in uh, from my childhood. But uh, I, I see that makes sense. It's kind of like the like the Disney character thing, right? You wanted to kind of break out in a different role, try something new, challenge yourself. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, exactly. Um, how long did it take to get in the makeup for your character? Because I mean, everyone in this film was kind of completely done up. Like, how long did that, did that process take? Uh, it would take a couple, but you know, if we were doing the full shebang, it would take a couple hours um, of, you know, five, six people working on you at the same time. Um, but I, you know, I have been acting for a long time and know that I can request wardrobe that will cover most of the area that, that they'd otherwise be tattooing for many <laughs> scenes to kind of tone it down a little bit, you know. And then there were a few um scenes where we wanted to have it all revealed so on the days that i had to do all of it it would take multiple hours so we would come in very early and then if we were going to have it removed that would take at least an hour to have it removed at the end of the day that is yeah that's a long time i hope you have some good podcasts or something to listen to during that time yeah, um, they would turn on music and it would be almost like a like a party that you couldn't move at all but you know there was a, a a jovial atmosphere they tried to make it fun excellent yeah i guess it's like a spa day right i guess you could think of it that way sure uh and i'm glad that you mentioned a jovial atmosphere i was curious like this film is very dark like it it is it is gritty and violent and kind of just visceral to watch i was curious how the uh the attitude on set was because i imagine it could go either way right other people could be like very somber like staying in character or you could like have to have a happy kind of joking attitude just to kind of break up the scenes and kind of reset yourself after some of these, uh, these moments. Sure. The, I mean, you know, if there was, um, a very heavy emotional scene, the atmosphere on set would be, you know, you try to keep it somber for, for people who have to tap into heavy emotions for, for work. But outside of that, it, you know, and, and I'm not talking about just us being maniacs or evil or whatever. That's not that that's not the kind of emotion I'm talking about. But like, for the most part, we tried to make it very, there was a lot of levity, you know, uh, the subject matter was um, such that I think we would have gone crazy if we had just, you know, tried to maintain that sensibility 24 hours a day. Yeah, no, that would be a very rough method acting shoot if everyone was in character all the time. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, so other than like the you know, a couple hours of makeup to get the tats and get like your wardrobe ready, did you have to do anything else to kind of prepare for this role maybe before you started filming or maybe daily when you were kind of getting ready to like be this character? Um, I had a lot of conversations with Nick beforehand. We sat down and discussed everything and the dynamics and stuff that, uh, you know, wasn't even necessarily in the movie, but like the origin stories of a lot of these characters. So, so we had a very clear understanding of what all of that was, but when it came time to actually doing it day to day, no, it was really, you know, that kind of transformation happened as the tattoos were going on, as the wardrobe would be going on then you would just kind of slip into it in that way. Nice. And you mentioned that you'd heard about this, this project a while ago. Like, how long did this take to kind of get up to speed? And then how long were you able to spend filming? I, I couldn't tell if this was like a pre-pandemic movie, a during-pandemic movie. It was tough to kind of tell from the uh, the, the way it was shot. This was during the pandemic. Um, this was during the pandemic, which definitely added some uh, logistical obstacles, certainly. Um, because it was kind of, I mean, I don't even remember when the, the height of the pandemic was, I guess, 2020. This was 2021. Okay. But it, it, it took it took Nick a while to get it made. You know, I, I think, like, if you look at um, movie studios and financers, th those people are really mostly interested with in, in making money. And... Uh, I think PG-13 is kind of the sweet spot for making money. Um, and this is definitely not a PG-13 <laughs> movie. There's a lot not There's a all. lot in this movie that I think many people would shy away from making. And Nick has such integrity and such a strong artistic sensibility that he's not going to shy away from any of the stuff that is uh, integral to this story. And so I think it was difficult from from that vantage point to get it made but he did finally get it made and and there it is yeah for sure like i don't watch trailers or read about movies before i watch them i turn this on i was like oh wow this is this is very different like and the, the level of detail that they have like the effects are really good the kind of like this the lighting is great like it is a it is a dark film but it is a well-made like well-crafted dark film yeah yeah the the effects people um, there was a dude down in Mexico named, I think his name's Caesar Prelop. I could be butchering his last name. Um, we'll go with it. Him, him and his team were phenomenal. They were really phenomenal. I thought the tattoos looked really great. You know, I don't always think movie tattoos look great. I thought our tattoos looked great. And then the blood and, uh, the, 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 the gore, viscera. yeah, the viscera. Yes, viscera is the word. I thought all of that stuff looked really good too. Yeah, for sure. And um, so I just have to ask, like, when filming was finally done, did you go to church? Did you say hail Mary? Like, what did you do to repent from this movie? I got, you know, I have four daughters. I have a granddaughter. I am uh, surrounded by young women, and so midway through, there was a break for Fourth of July. Uh, and I went home and spent that with them. And that was a nice kind of uh, detox from <laughs> from this headspace. And then immediately following, I went and spent time with them. Um, and that was really all it took to kind of clear my head of the of the madness. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. So I know we have limited time. I'm going to switch. I call it the lightning round. They're just lightweight questions about the film. I want to see how your personal experiences map to things in the movie. You can feel free to skip on any of them. I will not be offended, but I try to keep them very answerable. Okay. First question is, do you have any tattoos? I do. And all I right. hate them. And I regret <laughs> all of them. <laughs> I was going to ask if you if you uh, wanted to get them. But no, it sounds like you did, but now you don't. <laughs> I, I mean, I have one that I don't regret. And it's very small. And nobody will ever see it because it's on my chest. Or very few people will see it. And the other ones, all of the other ones I got as a teenager. And I regret them. There you go. A cautionary tale right there. Uh, have you ever joined or been recruited by what one consider to be a cult no all right uh, are you into heavy metal music no i'm into punk rock music and as a kid i felt like in los angeles there was a rift between the heavy metal kids and the punk rock kids and i don't know if that was in my head or what but like you know i i was uh i was more into mohawks than long hair as a as a kid 
I don't know if it would be a rift, but I think they were both very antisocial kind of groups, like inviting to those who were insular, but also antisocial. So I don't think it was necessarily a rift. I think it just, we hung out in different spots, right? I sure. Guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you ever seen a rattlesnake in the wild? I imagine since you've said LA, you probably have. I have. Yeah, I have. I, I, I've seen a rattlesnake and I've seen a baby rattlesnake, which uh, was on a hike with my daughter. She was probably three or four at the time. She's now 18. And uh, I remember us thinking that it was very cute. Um, and then knowing in the, knowing that the babies uh, had no like governor on how much venom they distributed with a bite. So going like, okay, it is very cute, but it's not a good idea to get close to. Yeah, exactly. And that, that rattle is just something that it sounds so unique and like scary when you hear it in the wild. Yeah. Yeah. And there were, um, actual rattlesnakes in this movie that were real rattlesnakes and i got to see them too and and didn't like seeing them very much at all to be honest with you i can imagine but you survived like you're here so you I clearly did. survived <laughs> yes sir uh and i have to ask because mall rats is one of my favorite movies of all time can you do magic eye i, I, have I to can know. all right i can do magic eye i did i intentionally you know like uh as I think if, if it was today, I would definitely see the thing. The sailboat. Um, yeah, but well, who knows? I've been oh. told it's not a sailboat. So I, I don't actually know because <laughs> I intentionally didn't see that one. You know, I thought like, well, Willem can't see it, so I'm not going to see it. And so I never really did the let my eyes relax enough to see it and and i don't know what it is i you know maybe it wasn't the sailboat i was assured at the time that it was but who knows that is so amazing and sad like i love the kind of like dedication to your craft but also like the that piece i, I wish i had <laughs> done it no i wish yeah. i had done it i feel like kind of a moron for not having done it because i could say definitively no guys it was definitely a sailboat but i don't know well I guess we'll just, we'll never know until they release like the 4K remaster where maybe we can like blow it up and figure out what it actually was. Exactly. One of these days. And so uh, the film is out tomorrow, June 23rd, 2023. You're out promoting it, getting the word out. I imagine you have other projects that you're working on. After people see you and God is a bullet, what else can they look forward for you next? Maybe like a heartwarming family film? <laughs> uh, I, I got a, a, another kind of dark indie called um, Blood for Dust. Yes, I love it. <laughs> just premiered at Tribeca and... Um, and then another kind of dark one called Manodrome. But I am doing a television series uh, for Amazon, which is uh, light and nice. And I play a very nice person in it. A nice palate cleanser. I mean, you said that you were into punk, but this sounds like you're kind of moving into the metal direction as you get older, which is, is wonderful. <laughs> welcome. Welcome yeah. to the club. <laughs> Thank you. Happy awesome. to be a member. <laughs> so you can check out those movies later, but make sure to check out God's a Bullet. It premieres in theaters on June 23rd, 2023. This is Ethan Suplee, who plays Gutter. Thank you so much for your time. Dave, thank you. That was Ethan Suplee, who plays Gutter in God is a Bullet, which is coming to theaters on June 23rd, 2023. It is a gritty, man-on-fire-like situation, except you're dealing with Satanists now instead of cartel members. It has some really great effects, uh, a lot of good suspense, and a long, violent journey for all the characters to embark on. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.